but this was really a kind of an idea for a flexible talent marketplace, which was based on joining together some buyers and sellers of her market research, insight, analytics. So, and it was at that time, just after the start of the pandemic, where I think like flexible working almost presented itself like AI, you know, like gig economy. Everyone's going to be in the gig economy. Like it's the end of the career. It's all about, you know, getting on uh, uh, portfolio careers uh, and such. up work or Fiverr or something, you know. And if you don't want to do that, then, you know, ride a bike for delivery. Um, all the valuations were really high and the business model seemed quite obvious. It was just about, you know, picking a niche, getting enough supply and demand, building a kind of platform where people can go on search, you know, find someone, book, interact, you know, pay, schedule, all that sort of stuff. And uh, the template seemed like it wasn't about the template. It was more about like, can you find this, this, this southern niche where these two groups have got no way of connecting but they really want to and it all just went wrong because we spent so much money on technology we we spent it through a development process that was really old-fashioned it was really expensive it was really slow it was very architectural so it was like this is a picture of the shard we're going to build the shard over the next three years floor by floor it wasn't reacting to what was going on and so like the shard isn't the shard until the shard's finished so it was basically like nothing so no one would demo it no one would try it out meanwhile we're just spending all the money and and so we tried to sort of leapfrog the situation by making it into a sort of managed service so that we kind of hold the hand of the customer the vendors make transactions happen and then it became obvious that they didn't really want to work this way anyway and like, as soon as they could, they'd just go back to WhatsApp because it was just more convenient. Uh, it suited the way that they wanted to work. They didn't really want to kind of log in and do all this stuff and then pay 20% and then they can't change the contract. And I was just like, yeah, I just, I didn't really think that I needed to ask the audience as much as I actually needed to the audience. I thought I'd kind of done that bit up front. And now I just got to kind of got the blueprints of it. Karen just needs to get the builders in, need to start building, and it's all going to be fine. And actually, I think the key thing was the underlying sort of desire for that service to exist just wasn't there. I think um, there's, which there's meant probably that something no one could really understand of, what it was. I think it's, there's, there's probably something in there along, you know, sometimes people will tell you that they want something because it sounds like a really good idea. But actually, when you put it to them on a silver platter, it's not what they needed and therefore they don't use it. Um, and I think that's really, uh, yeah. cause that's really hard to research and analyze because, if you, again, the only people you can ask is the end user and they're telling you they want it. But actually, yeah. is it what they need? And sometimes the two diverge. And I think that's yes. it's a painful lesson. But yeah. yeah. Completely agree. 